is the most common STI? Let's pretend that the title of this video didn't give it away. The vast majority of us will contract at least one strain of HPV. That includes you, and that includes me. are very common and we're all familiar with warts, right? We've seen them, maybe you've had some. They can appear on your toes or your fingers. They can also appear on your genitals. I have at least one strain of HPV. You can see on my hand, I have this little scar from when I got a wart removed last year. Warts are caused by HPV and there are over 150 strains of it. 40 of those strains are transmitted through sex. We can break down those 40 strains into two basic categories. There are high risk strains and low risk strains. Low risk strains are the types that can cause warts. They're lower strains because even though they cause warts and people see that as a big scary thing, they don't cause cancer. So, you know, it's not a risk to your health. There are two strains that cause most cases of genital warts. High risk strains are labeled high risk because they're the types that can cause cancer. There are 13 different strains that can cause cancer, including 16 and 18. That's what we found for white patients anyway. A study by Duke found that black women actually are more likely to have types 35, 66, and 68. So this is a really important note. We're gonna come back to this. HPV lives in epithelial cells. You can think of these as like surface cells. They're on your skin and moist surfaces. And it's transmitted through skin to skin contact, just like herpes. The fact that it's so easy to spread around is part of why a lot of people get it. Most people don't know they have it. There aren't really any symptoms unless it becomes cancerous. So it just sort of flies around all over the place. Another reason that it's really common is because there is no FDA approved HPV test for males or anyone with a penis. Yup, you heard that right. There's no way to test men for HPV. That's kind of bad because HPV is responsible for virtually all cervical cancers. Less commonly, but it still happens, HPV can cause penile, anal, and oral cancers. Fortunately, getting cancer from HPV is relatively rare. About 90% of cases just clear up on their own within a couple years. And more good news, pap smears will prevent HPV from causing cancer. <laughs> Let me just say a thing about pap smears. It's like the worst name for a cancer screening ever. I know that pap smears can be uncomfortable for people because you have to get naked, the doctor, you know, swab your cervix to look at the cells. That could be a little bit vulnerable. It's like, hey, the doctor is just literally in my vulva right now. If your first few pap smears feel a little bit awkward or uncomfortable, you're completely normal. It's okay. Just know that this is for your health. Now, in the event that your pap smear does come back abnormal, don't forget. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily cancer or anything bad. There are a lot of reasons that a result can be abnormal and it provides your doctor with the information they need if they need to monitor your cervical cells so that they can catch anything before it becomes cancerous. Vagina owners, this is why pap smears are really important. The CDC recommends that you start getting them when you're 21 and then every three years after that. Side note, there are also anal pap smears, but they're much less common. They're usually only used in populations where someone's considered high risk. And guess what? There's even more good news. Condoms can help lower your risk and vaccines can prevent HPV entirely. This is really fucking cool. Gardasil 9 is a three shot series and it protects against the types of HPV that are most likely to cause problems. But point to note, Gardasil 9 isn't quite as effective for black women as it is for white women. Why is that? During clinical trials, only 57 out of 2300 of the studies actually looked at populations of people from African descent. So scientists basically have developed a vaccine that's based on data from white people. It wasn't intentional, it wasn't malicious, but it's significant. We need to be paying attention to representation in medical studies. I really hope that the next update of Gardasil includes more of the strains that will protect people equally. When should you get the vaccine? Kids should be getting it around age 11 before they have any potential exposure to the virus and you can get it up to age 26. The more of us that are protected, the less it will spread. So get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Internet, did you hear that? During the first shot, my son got lightheaded and that made me worry. I read online that vaccines can cause autism or other bad side effects. I just don't trust scientists with these things. I read this article that said there's aluminum in vaccines, like actual metal. There are websites online that are spreading paranoia and fear about vaccines. Those types of things make us feel scared, right? Because we all want to feel safe and protected and parents want to protect their children. But the fact is vaccines do protect us and they do protect kids. Vaccines have saved millions of lives. As someone who would like to see a healthier, happier world, please get vaccinated. If you're feeling a little anxious about vaccines, I think that, you know, information from reliable resources is a really good way to calm those fears. So I'm gonna link some more reading down below. Okay, there you have it. There is the HPV 101. There are also overlaps in this conversation about stigma from STIs that I already covered in my herpes video, which you can check out here. 
But other than that, please stay safe and healthy out there. Sending lots of love. Mwah. I'll see y'all next time. Except your mom. Oh. What?